Now, the Senate has admitted that Nigeria is in dire food crisis that requires emergency measures uh, to end. Well, to tackle the problem, the Senate says all options, including the importation of food to ease the hunger in the land, are on the table. A Senate solution to the current food crisis in the country uh, followed a report of its joint committee's interaction with Nigeria's economic managers. Omo Bazwai tells us more. The cry of hunger pervading the land finally reached the ears of the Nigerian Senate on Tuesday. This was as federal lawmakers deliberated on a report of his joint committee asking the federal government to invest more in agriculture and to create an enabling environment for farmers to ease hunger and related economic hardship in the country. The Senate committee report is a loaded nine page document that prefers solution to Nigeria's rising inflation. But what caught the attention of the Senate more is the growing hunger in the country. I believe at the moment now, we are at the threshold where everything, nothing should be ruled out because Nigerians want food. The hungry population is an angry population. And so we must do everything possible to put food on the table of Nigerians. I recognize the need for us to protect uh, local production, but at the moment we are under an emergency. Joint Many other lawmakers, including Senator Simon Lalong and Ali Indume, share in the sentiment. As a former Minister of Labor, Lalong holds the view that the hardship in the country could have been better managed if the arrangement to increase workers' salaries had been implemented on time. Because all, most of the things that I've seen, we are seeing today were all some of the things that Mr. President envisaged. And he said, as soon as we continue with implementation, it will reduce the pressure. So what it seems now is that people are just wallowing in the problem and they will drown all of us. So I suggest that we look at the issues and the experts that we have here are even enough the high drama came as the Senate considered the ways and means borrowing of 30 trillion naira, out of which 22 trillion was borrowed from the central bank under former President Muhammad Buhari. It was a borrowing that questioned the oversight functions of the Ninth Senate, with Yobe State bond lawmaker Senator Ahmed Lawal in charge. Lawal was available to explain the Senate's action at the time, as calls intensified for an investigation into what Akbabio believes is a clear case of fiscal recklessness that has brought Nigeria's economy to where it is today. We are saying what you did at that time has put the nation in more mess economically. And therefore, because of the current economic situation, we have found ourselves that there is need for us to look at the details and to know whether they were rightly spent. But then there is somebody that must, 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 must make a statement on this issue. It was not 30 trillion, it was 22, and then of course the one we had made it 20, almost 23. So if we have a ways and means that is 30 today, that means something happened between then and now. On foreign exchange management, the Senate expressed concern over Naira's continuous depreciation against the dollar. It resolved to probe an alleged invalid $2.4 billion transaction by the Central Bank of Nigeria, even as some lawmakers consider the raid of the EFCC on Burundi change on Monday as an act of desperation. Naira moves on the 29th of January from 891 to 1,300, and on the 9th of February, when the committee met with the management of the economy, and it was 1,500. Yesterday, 1,700. As I speak, 1,800. Then we need something different to come. The Senate also aligned itself with reports of its joint committee when it called for a thorough probe of 10 trillion naira anchor borrower scheme for rice farmers by the APS Bank. Omo, Bazwai, Rise News.
Thanks, Omo, for that report. I'm joined now from a Lagos studio by Wale Oyekoya, an agriculturalist and the managing director of Bama Farms. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and thanks for uh, your patience there uh, in Lagos. Uh, first off, I mean, <laughs> why is there hunger in the land? Is it a case of uh, the lack of, you know, not enough food or the non-availability of food or is it lack of affordability? What exactly are we dealing with here in Nigeria today? I think it's just purely simple, lack of visions by our leaders. And we have to ask ourselves a question, how did we get to where we are today? And how do we get out of it? Instead of apportioning blames to the president of the country. This problem has been there for so long, even right from the uh, Gulagulan town to Buari, now to the present administration. It's only our leaders, they don't believe to the, they don't listen to the people in the, in the corridor of power. But we have, been, uh, we have been emphasizing on this issue of food crisis for more than 10 years now. And what have they done? Nothing, nothing, everything is just blown out of proportions. Now everybody is complaining because there have, there have been protests here and there. And if the federal government and the state government have done the right thing, I don't think we find ourselves in this kind of problem we are. I will, take, I will, I will give an example for the state government. The state government have the power to allocate lands to farmers because if you look at the 1978 Land Use Act, it gives the power to the state government to be able to allocate lands, especially on the agricultural land to people to do farming. But when you look around now, most of the rural lands have been converted into commercial use for the urban areas. And this trend will keep on continuing and we keep on having food crisis until the right thing is being done. And we keep on, we keep on stating that most of the funds that are supposed to be intervention funds, like the anchor bra, is not getting to the hands of the real farmer, but for the portfolio of political farmers. They don't believe us. Now they say, they can see what is really going on. How could 22 trillion of Naira is being approved by the National Assembly just last year, and up to this moment, we couldn't even see what the 22 trillion have done. If 22 trillion Naira have been really be, uh, be used accordingly to what they have really appropriated the money for, I don't think we should be having a problem. And at the same time, if you look in the, in the 60s and 70s, the Nigeria relies on the exploitation of some of these agricultural products. Mm. But right now, it's like it depends on the oil that is no more there. Let, let me quickly take you up before so it flies off my head. So we need to move beyond uh, this. Yeah, Prince uh, Oyekoya, the, you, you just mentioned uh, something about yes, political, uh, political farmers. Uh, you know, on the issue yes. of the Angkor Bora scheme that was handled by the central bank uh, before now. Are you saying these political farmers, help us to understand this definition of yours, these political farmers, are you saying they are not even farmers to start with? Or they are high, you know, top level uh, farmers who, you know, use their privilege to access uh, the funds from the central bank of Nigeria? There's nothing like top level farmer. They are not farmers period because some of this money once it's come down it, it goes through their tables from the abuja before any farmer from gombe or from baoshi or from lagos could tap into this money the money is already distributed among themselves so this is why we keep on having all these problems and what we really what we really need right now is production 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 without production the naira we keep on dropping because we are not exporting and the only way we can get some uh, foreign exchange is through the is through the exportation of some of our farm produce, like in the olden days where we used to export cocoa, rubber, granite, uh, cement, seeds, or yam. But all those ones have gone uh, be beyond the, the reach of people. So if you don't have anything to consume, how are you going to be exporting? So we keep on saying that the government really needs to rise up. We have to stop blaming the federal. We, need, we have to get on, on, on top of the state because the masses are closer to the state and the local government. We believe that local government have been so uh, embroidered by the, legal, by, uh, by the state government. But there are so many farmers that really wanted to do farming, but you see that the environment is not conducive, the encouragement is not there, they are not getting funding, and few people that have the farm are being taken over by the government or 
or by the part that may be, I give an example of what happened to us in Lagos State where some of the farmers, uh, where some farm were being taken by the military up to this moment, about 30 farmers were being displaced in Lagos State. And up to this moment, nobody say anything. So it's like they are talking from both sides of the mouth that you want food production, and at the same time, the few farmers that are doing the farming, you are displacing them. So the state need to really get to their need to get to the round table and say, how can we feed the table? Look at what is happening in, uh, in Anambra, uh, Niger State, and uh, bon, uh, um, uh, Bono State. They are do really doing good, where they are giving tractors to farmers. Because by the time you give tractors to farmers, it's going to reduce the numbers of, of men working in the farm. And as we keep on saying, mechanization is the only way out. So if all states, like all these palliatives they are giving to the state government should be converted into some of these equipments, then there will be a lot of food production in the, in the state. Right. Uh, let me come and in very quickly. Uh, you, the, I mean, you, talk about, you talk about mechanized farming. I've been hearing that since I was in my mother's womb, if I may say so. And mechanized farming continues to be a mirage in Nigeria. And that's a long-term uh, you know, way of addressing the issues of food uh, crisis in Nigeria. What needs to be done now? We know a few days ago, the president actually met with 36 state governors. And what do you think? What should the state governors be doing now? Because you put it at, the, at their doorstep. What are the practical steps they can begin to take now to, you know, change uh, things immediately? Well, buying tractors is, is not a long-term issue. As I said, some of, some of the states are doing it now. If most of the states can be committed like what Anambra and Bono State have been doing, definitely we will get there. You, you have to look at, at our populations of over almost about 300 million. So our population keep on deceiving us. We, talk, we think that we are seeing about 150 million people. We are, we, are, we are more than double. So definitely telling farmers to go to the farm through cutlass and hole should be for the subsistence farming. We should go beyond the subsistence farming right now. So the state government needs to provide uh, adequate seed, adequate, uh, adequate fund in terms of grant. This is not about loan, because some of the loan we, we go back. At the same time, the problem we are having right now that many people are not even addressing is the climate change. The climate change is affecting our food production, which leads to the food crisis. It's affecting the economy, which leads to the economic crisis. So the climate change needs to be tackled. And you cannot blame the federal government for the climate change. You cannot blame uh, uh, President Tinubu for this. So every hands must be on deck in order for us to get out of this mess of food crisis. Mm. And the state government should be able to take the lead by really coming out and saying, yeah, all these farmers, we need to do the right thing. And gone are the days where they'll be distributing money. This is not the right time to be distributing 15,000, 20,000, 50,000. Teach them how to fish. Don't give them fish. Right. By the time, how much is 50,000? By the time you get to the market and go and buy this and buy that, 50,000 is gone. So they should <laughs> stop deceiving people that they are giving out cash. Why can't you buy equipments for all these farmers? Uh, modern equipments does not cost that much. And we keep on, I keep on saying that we have 774 local governments in the whole of Nigeria. If each local government is giving bulldozers and tractors, we say how much food we, that we can produce in this country. Right. Our farmers need to be uh, calling up to be discouraged and not, and not to be displaced. Mm. Now, one of the challenges, Prince Oyekoya, is the issue of uh, food uh, storage or adequate food storage, if you like. Uh, about 33 silos in the country, yes. we hear that about 22 of them have been privatized. As a matter of mm -hmm. fact, the House of Reps are looking at the process of privatizing uh, those uh, 22, uh, you know, silos. Should silos be in the hands of government squarely or should they be privatized in a way that, uh, you know, you can actually monitor what it, not just the silos themselves, but the content? Because we're hearing now, based on the president's uh, directive, that silos should be, you know, open, flung open, and uh, grains, about 42,000 tons, uh, given to the poorest of the poor uh, Nigerians. We're hearing there's nothing in the silos. But should they be in the hands of government, or should they be privatized in the first place? Well, I believe the government has no business doing business with agriculture. All, all what we need is, a, is just conducive environment. And out of the tariffs, uh, out of the tariff three uh, silos you'll be talking about, I believe that we, we, uh, we were part of the people that really 
uh, advise the federal government then that you, they should give it to the private sector. And I believe 22 mm -hmm. up to 26 have been privatized and given to private people. But I can convincingly tell you that right now there's nothing in most of the silos. Everything is empty. Because if you have uh, grains in the silo, I don't think the poultry farmer will be suffering. The people in the last row will be suffering as the way we are suffering now because I can't imagine myself that we are buying a tons of maize for 600,000 naira. How do you how do you want the farmer to survive? And this is a country that we, that we even merely train uh, one seed on the ground with germinate, but the security is the most important thing that, that, that is not there to protect the farmers. Either the, the regional security is not there, the food security is not there. So the security is have to go a long way. Our military men cannot be in every farms. And likewise, our policemen cannot be in every farm, but by so doing, we, we expect the federal government to provide the, the security, and at the same time, the state also, because they, they were provided with all this, um, uh, full, uh, the security votes, right. and they are getting allocation from the federal government, and at the same time, the IGR of their state is still being there. Too. So the state should be should be held accountable on how the money is being spent without even helping the, the farmers in their state. Mm. And I see no reason why we cannot have solid facilities in, in every local government. I don't see no reason why we cannot have processing plants in yeah. every local government. So the, go, the, 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 the problem is just with the state government. They need to really get up instead of just flying all over the, all over the, all over the world. They should stay in their, in their state and be able to call their and their farmers and ask them what do they really need in order for the right. for the food security to be abated in the country. Ah, uh, Prince no. Wale so, Wikoya, agriculturist, uh, managing director of Bama Farms. I have to say thank you very much uh, for joining us on Prime Time. Hope to see you again uh, soon.